Hi there! If you're planning to build a new smart home in 2024, then this should be useful for you. I will give you some recommendations based upon my personal experience. I have many years of smart home experience, went down different routes, failed, learned and started over again. There are so many possibilities on how to tackle the smart home challenge that you most likely can't see the forest for the trees. It's pretty complicated to get an understanding how everything works together and which technologies are best for what. It also depends on what you want to accomplish with your smart home. Do you want to be able to just control some devices like lights and shutters via app and voice control and build some very rudimentary automations? Or do you want your whole house to be connected and automated, including for example climatization and heating, energy monitoring and optimization, media control, security and so much more? This video will help you in any case. Let's start with the basics. One very important differentiator is whether you want to go for external control, usually via proprietary cloud solutions provided by device manufacturers, or whether you want your whole house to be controlled locally. Both have advantages and disadvantages. If you go for the external control path, where the device manufacturer provides you with an app as well as third-party integrations, then you can usually use the full functionality that the vendor provides for their devices via their app. Also, you don't have to care about maintenance of the infrastructure. The only thing you have to provide is a stable power supply and a stable internet connection. Integration with other smart home platforms is usually also provided by the manufacturer via their API as well as via native integrations to larger platforms such as Amazon Alexa, Google Home, Apple HomeKit, IFT and more. The downturn of the cloud path is that you're fully dependent on the manufacturer. If they decide to discontinue the product and its cloud features, you will not be able to use it anymore. If they decide that they do not want to support certain third-party integrations anymore, it might break your smart home. This happened recently with MyQ, a manufacturer solution for controlling garage door openers. They just closed their API for third-party solutions. Luckily, it was possible to find a way around this as the linked video describes. Interoperability with other manufacturers and their devices is only given if the manufacturer actively supports this. Another downturn of the external control is that your data will be stored outside of your own premises and you can't be sure what's going to happen with your data. And what I think is most disadvantageous is that if you or the external vendor have an internet outage, you can't control your devices anymore. The other path is going for local control of your devices. This means that the whole magic happens only in your house and that there is no dependency towards external parties. All data will be stored only locally in your house and you have full control over what happens with your data. You can still control your devices during an internet outage and you have the full power of local automations getting the best out of your smart home. The downturn here is that you are fully responsible for the infrastructure. You also have to back up the solution yourself and you have to take care of third-party integrations by yourself. My personal advice is definitely to go local wherever possible. The advantages of being local and being under full control yourself are huge. But of course, it is not possible in all cases. For some device types, you might just not have a chance and have to accept that the only way to connect the device is via external cloud. An example could be a car, which is connected by a 4G or 5G network and is per se not always in your house. Such a device can't be connected locally, of course. If you want to go local and want to control all of your devices locally, you need some kind of local hub which connects all of your devices and allows you to create automations for multiple different devices. For example, turn on a light when motion is detected by a motion sensor. I definitely recommend using an open source solution with a wide community and support for different device types, protocols and vendors. And from my feeling, one of the best solutions available on the market, which is open source and very strong, is Home Assistant. This is an extremely powerful platform with loads of integrations for different device types, protocols and vendors, as well as very convincing automation and dashboarding possibilities. 
And the Home Assistant community is huge and ever-growing. So every day new integrations and add-ons are being developed and once per month a large new software release of Home Assistant is provided packed with new features. Okay, so now we have discussed that it would be preferable to go local wherever possible and to lose a local central hub such as Home Assistant to control all of your devices. But how do you connect all of your devices locally to Home Assistant? There are so many protocols out there which makes it really difficult to choose. That's why I want to give you my personal recommendation of the best protocols depending on your use cases. The communication stack in my personal smart home mainly consists of Ethernet, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth Low Energy, Zigbee, some proprietary sub-gigahertz radio signals, for example 433 MHz, and for the future Matter, which uses Wi-Fi and Thread. So you might ask the question, what is Matter? Matter is a new manufacturer-independent smart home standard that aims at allowing any device of any manufacturer to easily integrate locally with any smart home hub. At the moment, there is only a limited number of devices that support Matter, but it is growing. And in my personal opinion, Matter is very promising as it removes the friction. You don't have to worry about compatibility of new devices with your smart home anymore. As long as you buy a Meta certified device, you can rest assured that it is compatible with your smart home. If you have the choice and are free to select the communication technology based upon the use case, I have created a decision tree that might help you choose. The first question to answer is whether there is a power outlet close by the application area or not. If there is no power outlet, I would propose to choose a low power protocol such as Zigbee, Thread or Bluetooth Low Energy and then power the device via batteries. Otherwise, if there is a power outlet close by, the next question would be, is there an Ethernet outlet close by or not? If that's the case, then I would definitely try to choose Ethernet because a wired connection is always the fastest and most reliable one. If there is no Ethernet outlet close by or there is a mobile application like a robot vacuum, then I would ask the question, do you have a lot of data to transmit? Like for example, camera pictures, firmware updates, etc. If yes, then I would go for Wi-Fi or Matter over Wi-Fi. If no, then you're actually free to choose whichever radio technology you want to use. But I would go for Bluetooth Low Energy, Zigbee or Thread in that case because it is good to avoid Wi-Fi whenever possible from my point of view in order not to cloak your Wi-Fi network with too many devices. But as said, all these recommendations represent my personal opinion. So I'm really happy to discuss and I'm looking forward to reading your comments below the video. Thank you. The following illustration shows how a setup could look like. We have Home Assistant at the heart of our architecture. Home Assistant is the central hub that orchestrates and automates everything. Then we have a lot of locally connected devices which connect to Home Assistant via certain protocols as I have explained before. But then we will also have some cloud connected devices as it will not be possible to connect all of your devices locally. I'm pretty sure about that. And then Home Assistant will be able to provide third party integrations to solutions such as Amazon Alexa or Google Home. It will also provide powerful client applications like a smartphone app, a smartwatch app, a desktop app, and now even an Apple CarPlay app. And what's really important is that you please make sure to back up your Home Assistant instance on a machine that's separate from the machine Home Assistant is running on. So that whenever something is wrong with your Home Assistant installation, you can always pull a backup and go back to a snapshot back in time. Because Home Assistant will be your central hub, which integrates all of your devices, but it also holds all the configurations and all the automations and it would be really a pity if you would have to reconfigure everything. Okay, so I hope you got a good overview of all the smart home relevant topics. If you liked this video, please let me know because I might publish some follow-up videos with more detailed topics in the future. Also, if you like my videos, please watch also my other videos. Thank you, bye-bye.